What's up, Team Backpack? I'm your host, Marijuana, and you need to know Nitty Scott MC. Peace, peace. Yo. This life I'm living is spinning and ribbon winning. I'm just penning in my inner decisions with the precision. Make incisions under no supervision. And I envision giving that musicians my ammunition is written. Listen, head on collision, repetition they spitting while I'm just gifted and dishing them all the thoughts I inhibit. See, my limits is different. No additives and no gimmicks. Prohibit mimics and cynics and buck these credits. My lyrics are fit when they hear it like awakening spirits and all this vividness in me just overcoming the wickedness. Cause we pick it those who came to independently benefit, effectively inheriting merit to end the death. To sit. And every element of my sentences heaven sent. These men accepting my sentiments as a testament. Ain't gotta stress on my cleverness cause it's evident. Bend any senses, I pencil in my intelligence. Ooh. Nitty Scott. <laughs> Nitty Scott MC. <laughs> All right, so not only are you lyrically so dope, you're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the first time I seen you, it was uh, you did a collab with a local rapper in my town. Okay. And then a couple weeks later, I heard you on Hot 97. I'm like, who is this girl? <laughs> like, you are so dope. And then everything about you, like, hip hop wise, it's so, it's real. Like, I like Thank it. You. It's old school authentic. hip hop flow. It's authentic, yes. yes. And um, you really remind me of, like, the modern day uh, Lauren Hill. Yeah. Thank you. That's so, an honor. actually, Wyclef actually called me a baby Lauren Hill one time, and I almost died, <laughs> like, oh right there. <laughs> You are. It's really. Thank you. I enjoy listening to your music, and um, but originally you're from Michigan. Yes, right? I am from every, everywhere. I was born in Michigan in Grand Rapids, and then I was raised in Florida. I went to art school out there as a creative writing major, and then I moved to New York when I was 17. So. 17. Yeah. So how did? You, what are you looking to do here in Brooklyn? You moved to Brooklyn. Yes. That's what I remember. I okay. Did. Yeah, I left to Brooklyn when I was 17. It was kind of like a like a runaway situation. I was mm. really unhappy and kind of in a like dysfunctional situation down in Florida. Mm. So I just packed my things and I left um, and kind of decided to go live on a dream. Um, and I'm really proud of what I've been able to accomplish since then. Yes. Um, and it just it took a lot of years I think to just establish myself and to make sure that I was taken care of personally um, before I could even pursue the music, you know? Like, it was just a lot of, like, you know, being a teenager in a big city where you don't know anyone and nobody really cares about you and just mm -hmm. trying to find my way, you know? Um, simple things like a place to live, food on my stomach, getting from A to B, it was very difficult. And it took me a long time to just kind of find that rhythm. Um, and once I was more settled here after maybe two, three years, that's when I started to pursue the music and kind of like penetrate the scene that I wanted to be a part of. Do you have a good relationship with your parents? Do they support you? I do, I do. Oh. I have a great relationship with them now. Um, as a teenager, it was kind of rocky and I went through things with both of my parents um, that was really tough and in this weird way kind of motivated me to leave my house and go you know make something of myself so um it's kind of weird how like that your pain and your troubles are sometimes the catalyst to your success you know it's oh, kind of yes. weird um but i did you know come out here and i think you know you just you miss your parents in general when Get you a little leave the nest you know mm -hmm. what i mean um and then i think they just really saw how determined i was um the fact that I continue to attend high school. I make sure that I got my diploma on time. Mm -hmm. um, always maintained a job, always, you know, and I think they were just like, wow, you know, like my daughter really made a decision and committed to it. And even when things got really tough out here, there were a lot of times where people were like, you can go back to Florida and go, you know, live in a two story house and be comfortable, you know, and go live with mom and dad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I never did that. So I think they respect that. Um, and that's part of why our relationships have definitely mended and they have the uh, utmost support for me. Uh, something like a rap gypsy. The road is my jungle, a beautiful struggle in this musical hustle. Promoters telling me to show high flow, high want the full box so I blow trot <laughs> into a distant land where I can speak a language that we all understand. MPH and GPS, hoping that the TSA don't bring me stress. Um, I know in May you, you had a new album that came out. It did. The Art uh, of Chill. I just heard it, and my favorite track on there is actually uh, Nobody Knows. <gasps> Thank you. So I can really relate to it, and I feel like a lot of girls, that's why I say it's so authentic. We can relate to it. Yes. Um, if you don't mind me asking you, like, because I, 
yeah. it was very personal. Subject matter was touchy on that, but. Do you have like, did you develop like an anxiety or a type of depression? Yes, I definitely did. Um, you know, I use this album to touch on subjects that I think people are afraid to touch and places that, you know, a lot of people are afraid to go. Um, but I think mental health is something that is very important. Um, it's not discussed enough in hip hop, and there's a lot of stigma attached to it, where mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, you're crazy, you are suicidal, you're this, you're that. Um, and there's really a lack of support and like understanding of these conditions and mm -hmm. how they affect people. Um, so, you know, being a teenager and coming out here and experiencing all these things, I saw a lot of things that I don't think I was ready to see at 17 years old. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, like I just, you know, I experienced a lot, you know, and I've been I've been homeless, you know, I've been oh, um, abused, you know, sexually, mentally, you know, just lots of things. Um, and I felt like it was time to acknowledge that. And I felt like it was time to sort of deal with my demons and by talking about them, helping other people to become aware of their own, you know. So I did have like a really bad anxiety issue um, as early as like a year ago um i feel like i just recently got it more under control mm -hmm. and you know i still have the occasional panic attack and stuff but um i really did used to have like physical reactions and just be like physically sick by my own emotions um and i had to find ways to deal with that i had to just you know take the time to try to understand what was happening you know in my body when you know when things like that happen the actual chemicals that are you know causing you to feel this way mm -hmm. um you know just becoming like educated on what it was act that was actually happening to me um reading self-help books reaching out you know to people who can mentor me and guide me um implementing practices in my life like yoga and meditation and things that yes. just help me to find my chill and calm my thoughts you know what i mean um and that's kind of where the artist show came from it came from just like feeling crazy inside and feeling like I have to make sense of all these things going on in my head and I have to find that inner sense of tranquility that knows that I'm always going to be okay. And that's the art of chill. A lot of with the music out now, the mainstream music, we can't really relate to it. Right. You know, I, I don't It's like you're a fantasy almost. Really. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, it's like you kind of have to step into character to listen to certain records where it's like, well, you know, if I was this person, if I was this drug dealer or this mm -hmm. bad bitch, you know what I mean? But not everybody is, is that. So, and I think know. that's the problem because so many people are so lost now, they can't find themselves. But, right. you know, again, listening to your music, I could relate to it as a female. Thank so you. I appreciate it. You know, uh, you guys really need to check out that album, <laughs> you know, especially a pretty girl growing up in the city. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's tough. But yeah, that's definitely what it's all about. It's about filling that void as well because I feel like, you know, I listen to the radio and I listen to, you know, a lot of things that are out right now and I don't feel like I can relate you know a, the majority of yeah. you know women in entertainment I listen to what they have to say and I don't feel you you don't speak for me I don't relate um and I know that there has to be thousands of other girls that feel oh, that yeah. way <laughs> so in comes Nitty Scott you know mm -hmm. and, and I speak for you and I give a voice to to the women who are not being represented right now and I think that's very important mm -hmm. so and a lot of people are fans of Nicki Minaj, yeah. and um, she's great, she's talented. Yeah, I definitely respect her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people try to compare you to her, mm -hmm. being a female rapper, how does that, you know? I, I just, I mean, I think it's annoying, you know, from just the general, you know, standpoint of just wanting to have your own identity. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like with female MCs specifically, that's something that we always have to fight for, where you know, it, I, I guess it's just like in the female arena, there's become, it's become that there's one individual who is the standard and every other person that comes out after that is trying to copy her Yeah, or, or the opposite or whatever it is. It, it's like the comment is always about who you are in comparison to that. 
you know it's kind of almost like and you know and if you don't like Nicki Minaj the opposite of that is this person and it's like that like I just don't see why she kind of has to be like the bullet point standard mm. where you know we just have there's so many different facets of women um, and I feel like men get to thrive and have their own identities and get to sort of mm -hmm. occupy their own lanes. Um, so, you know, I definitely, you know, respect Nikki and all she's accomplished for herself. But, you know, I can't say that I'm particularly a fan. Um, and I think I just represent something different. And mm -hmm. I think that that's okay. Um, and I don't think that when you mention me and the fact, you know, and what I represent, I don't think you have to bring her up as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would like exactly. for there to be a day where it can just be like, this is Nitty Scott, this is Rhapsody, this is, you know, so-and-so, and this is what each of them represent, not so much like, and this is how they compare to the one rapper you already know. I think that's kind of corny. So what they all try to do. Yeah, so yeah. you know, hopefully we'll evolve from that. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. And also, I was going to ask you, because you're signed, you're now signed. No, I'm no. not. Where did you hear this? To Boombox Family? Well, Boombox Family is It's my, yours. Yes, yeah. Boombox Family is my entertainment company. Okay. Um, and That's I kinda, amazing. Yeah, okay. thank you. I kind of, I want to make it a, a collective, you know, bring more, you know, people into the fold. I kind of want to make it like this creative hub for just like-minded artists, you know, artists like a club, sort of, maybe? More so, like, I want it to be a, a distribution that, you okay. know, that's first. I do want to be able to distribute everything from music, books, films, you know, things like that. Um, and then I kind of want to, you know, be able to do that. I want to bring in different artists. Mm -hmm. Everyone from, you know, visual artists to actual musicians to, um, you know, producers, just kind of have this creative space where we can all thrive and be progressive and like-minded and have that that platform and that liaison to mm -hmm. put your material out that's what I want to do with boombox family so you know I need to start rapping or something. <laughs> and then yo, 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 yo. boombox right <laughs> so yeah it's you know it's, it's a label um, you know mm -hmm. an entertainment company label um, and I haven't fully you know been able to invest in it the way that I want to as mm. of right now I feel like I'm more focused on Nitty Scott MC the brand you know mm. me my music my touring um, and things of that nature but I do consider myself you know a young entrepreneur in the way that I do have this this business you know that I have every intention of bringing people to so definitely yeah. today is my birthday I'm 21 and I feel like Africa Half discovered, half wild, afflicted as a woman, yet pure as a child. I feel like Africa when they gather like a tribe around the sonic campfire that is my boombox. I'm a griot telling tales to percussion, you see. I am brave and misbehaved like a runaway slave who came back to set the plantation ablaze. I got roots being sold off per capita. I'm 21 and I feel like Africa. <laughs> She's a talented artist, aspiring actress. Ah. You heard it here first on Team Backpack. Yes. Is there anything you want to tell anybody before we go? So yeah, and I also wanted to take this time or whatever to kind of address, you know, to the fans and stuff that um, you know, the latter part of this year, you know, I put out the album and I wasn't able to work it the way that I wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of deliver, you know, some different things that were supposed to go along with the album. Um, because personal things happen, you know, I think people forget that, like, life still happens exactly. to artists. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, we, we actually, you know, still They're feel... They're real. Yeah, They're real. we're real human beings <laughs> that have, like, problems and mm -hmm. shit. Um, so, you know, things kind of literally did a 180 in my personal world. Mm -hmm. And I had to invest time in in Nitsia, you know, there's Nitty Scott, but mm -hmm. there's Nitsia, and I cannot neglect Nitsia or Nitty Scott will not be shit for y'all. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, I took that that time to um, invest in myself. Happy me, happy artist, you know. Yes. Um, and that's what it's been all about. So it's you know, 2015. I feel is the big comeback. You know, where I am just going to sort of resurface with new energy, mm -hmm. new material. Um, new people on the team, new everything, you know, and, and that's what Exciting. I needed to do. Yeah, I needed to like really clean house on Team Nitty Scott. 
mm -hmm. um, surround myself with, you know, the right people um, and people who I believe can elevate my situation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like I said, just, you know, invest in myself and make sure that I'm a healthy, happy person that's, you know, ready to take on the world the way that I want to. Um, and because I took the time to do that and to kind of heal, you know, from situations and whatnot, um, I think I'm ready to just bounce back in 2015 and give the Blue Box family everything that they've been waiting for. And tell so your story. Point. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, look out for that. 2015, the Audit Chill Visual Album, Nitty Scott MC, um, and some couple other surprises. We'll see. Make sure you stay tuned. You heard it <laughs> first on Team Backpack. Peace.